Okay, I wanted to start the video on the um, RCA Model 250, which is sitting back there. But I'm going to wait until the other parts radio shows up. So in the meantime, I've had a few requests to see if we could get the other uh, Emerson up and going. And I'm going to do the bare minimum on that just to see if it operates and then we'll pass that along somewhere. Let somebody else have the fun. What I forgot to mention when we did this one the other day was when you have something with this like cloth like covering on it, even after you clean it, it looks pretty dull and dead. You know, there's no life to it anymore. And what I do, you can see now it's pretty shiny. The leather handle looks pretty good. I use Kiwi boot polish on stuff like this. Uh, this Kiwi Brown, in fact, where the wood was worn down through, or the paint, the cloth, whatever this is, was worn down through to the wood. There was a big, you know, splotch there. The Kiwi stained it, and it's hardly even noticeable from a distance now. So it, it puts some life back in the finish is what it does. And it doesn't come off on your hands. And every six months or so you give it another pass over with boot polish and it looks good. And that's a trick I learned years ago when I was restoring, and I put it down here, these antique cameras. Uh, I used to collect these things like crazy. In fact, I've got a cedar chest with about 30 or 40 of these things in it that I should pull out and throw up on eBay. They're not really worth much. They were just a lot of fun to uh, to collect, clean up, and I used to actually take pictures with them. The rolls of film, the 127 film, is still available. What's not available is the autographic film. This was this used to have a stylus in it, and these autographic cameras, almost all of them are missing the stylus. I have a couple that do have them. But the idea was you pull the stylus out, if you took a picture of a celebrity or something, you could open this up and they could put their signature on the back of the negative. And when the film was developed, you had their picture and the signature. So, kind of cool. But anyway, uh, off subject there. Uh, this is black boot polish. I do the same thing to these. These are usually scuffed up from being knocked around. You go over them with black boot polish and uh, you can set them on a shelf. They're quite presentable. They look great afterwards. And again, every six months or a year, you just go over them again with the black Kiwi boot polish. But uh, if you've got one of these sets that has this cloth-like covering and it's dull and dingy looking, clean it up with some Windex or something and then give it a coat of boot matching color boot polish and uh, it'll bring life right back into it. Okay, enough on that nonsense. Uh, we'll get that Emerson over here on the bench and uh, see what we can do. Now this set is not nearly, uh, is in nearly good condition as the first one was. Uh, <laughs> you can see all the nasty cold solder joints on the chassis here. The speaker had a big rip in it. I put some liquid electrical tape on it. The voice coil is not rubbing, so the speaker should be fine. In fact, before I go any further, I should put a cover over that so I don't stick my finger As in it. You can Give see the uh, lens here is very yellow and nearly opaque and fractured away from the top. The front sheet metal is actually in very good condition. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny crease here that could be easily pushed out. In fact, I had thought about swapping this out for the other one, but the other one straightened out so nicely that I'm not going to bother trying to get these off. It's got a leather handle that's a lot more cheaply made than the one, this is a newer one believe it or not, than the other one is. The older one has a much nicer handle on it. Sadly it's missing the back uh, and as we spoke of earlier it's missing all the battery cables but I doubt anyone's going to run these on batteries anymore anyway. The cloth covering would probably clean up nicely and with a coat of boot polish like I put on the other one would probably look halfway decent. So the radio could be restored. Uh, I will probably pass okay, the this one. The first thing I'm going to do is take a quick check on the uh, filter capacitor here. 
I don't hold out a lot of hope for it. That's a pretty old cap that's been wrapped in paper. And uh, But let's find out. We'll turn on the power supply. That's off. We'll let this thing warm up. And we'll drop 90 volts in there and see what happens. But I don't have a lot of hope for these filter caps. But I've been wrong before. Alrighty. Let's see what happens. Oh, the current's falling off. Well, maybe I'm going to be proved wrong here. Oh, they're not as strong as the ones in, my, in the other set, but uh, let's go to the neutral position for like, you know, 1001, 1002, 1003. Yeah, they're holding charge. And the current is continuously dropping, 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 so they're reforming. Uh, this is a capacitor, though, that I would not leave in the set where I'm keeping it or passing it along uh, as a restored unit. But for the purposes of just seeing if this set will function, yeah, the current's dropped almost to zero. So, I think we're safe to put power through it anyway. So we'll shut that off. We're not going to need that anymore. And we'll come back down. The... That, okay, that's the across the line capacitor over here on the end. I bet that's leaky as sin. Just out of curiosity, let's uh, pull the tube out and see what the across the line cap looks like. Where's my... oh, it's way over there. All right. I will on. say this, because somebody's been in here uh, as much of a hack job as they've done, this one would be a whole lot easier to work on than the first one because there's a lot more room in here with all the big caps missing. A lot of the stuff in here has been replaced. Although, whoever did it didn't have a decent solder and iron to solder back to the frame of the chassis. But, uh, we're not going to try to restore this one. We're just going to see if it's viable for restoration. And I'm curious to see what... Oh, <laughs> there's a split in the cross the line cap. So, I'm not expecting much out of this. But let's see what happens, just out of curiosity. That's supposed to be a 0 .05. So, wow, right on the money. It measures right on the money. That's amazing, even with a crack down the side of it. Uh, okay, that's how many volts is this cap? It's a 400 volt cap. My goodness, no leakage. No, oh, yeah, there's a little bit of leakage at uh, the 200 or the 180 volt level. Yeah, now it's starting to leak. <laughs> but I'm surprised, even with the split down the side, the capacitance measures right on the money. Okay, we'll cut that one out of there just so we don't have a uh, smoke show. Well, let me get that taken care of, and we'll be right back. Well, we've removed the across the line cap that was over here, and I am out of .047 safety caps. They're on order. They're supposed to be here Tuesday. But I had an .047 uh, 400 volt Mylar film capacitor, which is basically all a safety cap is, so I just stuck it in there for noise abatement. Um, as Dave at the EEV blog would say, shall be right. <clears throat> and uh, then we went up here, I was going to change, the, well I'm going to change the coupling capacitor. The one that goes from the plate of the 1S4 over the grid of our audio tubes. The schematic calls for a .02 for C14, this has a .01. And this 400 picofarad cap that's supposed to be in there is totally missing not even there but I'll put a point since uh, it calls for a 0.02 and 
there's 0.01, I'm going to put a 0.015. I'm going to split right down the middle. It's just a coupling cap. And uh, I'm going to leave out that bypass capacitor. The uh, next owner can figure that out on his own. So let me get that cap changed out, and then we'll put some power right. on this puppy. The coupling cap has been changed, and our cross the line cap has been changed. And I know somebody out there is going to say, how do you know that cap was leaky? You tested it in circuit. Well, quick look at the schematic here will give you the story. You saw me yank the tube out. The reason I yanked the tube out is the heater was in the circuit. You yank the tube out of there, there's nothing in the circuit but the cap. So I guarantee that cap was junk. Just from looking at it, you know it was junk. All right. Uh, let's try to get everything in frame here. Uh, I got the signal tracer out because I know I'm going to need it on that general electric because it's full of uh, Loctal tubes. And anybody who understands Loctal tubes will know what I'm talking about. We'll cover that when we get to that radio. I'm going to move the camera over here. noises lately. You'd think I was getting old or something. Okay, let's get that out of the way. I'm not going to need that. Drag this thing over here. Try to get it all in frame if we can. Or as much of it as the camera will let me do. Pretty nasty looking cord. It's got a few chunks missing, but no guts, no glory, right? Okay, we're on dim bulb, and you can't really see the dim bulb with the camera, but it's back there. I can see it. Turn the voltage all the way down. Plugged into the right side. We're in the isolation transformer. Turn this puppy on and see what happens. I'm seeing a little bit of current flowing. I expect that because we got a rectifier and an amplifier tube over here. 50, uh, 50 B5 and a 35 W4. Oh, and this set, this set's got a big nasty dropping resistor because 50 and 35 doesn't equal 120. The uh, other set had the 117 N7 in it. Didn't need any kind of dropping resistor. This set, as far as I'm concerned, they took a step backwards and put these two tubes in and a dropping resistor, which is going to generate a ton of heat. But probably didn't have any 117 N7s available. All right, let's see here. We're getting up on 30 volts. 100 milliampers, it's not bad. And I had to steal tubes out of a couple other sets because I didn't have a full tube complement for this. But that's all right. Thirty milliampers. I would expect to see some tube glow at this point. One hundred and thirty milliampers is not a lot of current. Oh yeah, they're starting to light up. They're starting to light up. We've yeah, we're recording.
might have some troubleshooting to do. Who would have thunk it? There's 120. 150 milliamp years. You've got no audio amp. Dead silent. Alright, let me uh, let me get a voltmeter over here and we'll do some troubleshooting. Okay, I think I have everything in frame. Since we have absolutely nothing coming out of the audio amplifier here, and I know the 50B5 is a brand new tube, I'm suspicious because touching where I'm touching right here, that's the grid of the 1S5, which is our first audio tube. So I'm suspicious that this tube's not working. Now that was pulled out of a working set, so I know that tube's good unless something's wrong in here and it's taken out the filaments on me all of a sudden. But what I want to do is find out, do we have filament voltage? Do we have, you know, to warm these tubes up? So what I'm going to do is, if we look here, we come off the cathode of the 50B5 and we go through our heater string here. So we have ground, our heater string, and right over here where the 3Q4 would be, I didn't put it in. But I have access to pin 1, which is the beginning of our string. So we should have roughly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 6 volts across there. And uh, if we do, then I know those uh, 1 volt tubes are being powered. If not, then we've got to track down why I don't have any voltage here. But we should. This is a brand new tube. This should be dropping voltage across its cathode resistor. So let me make sure that first of all we have heater voltage for the 1 volt tubes. We'll get our ground on here. We are, yeah, we're recording. And my, oop, just banged my head. My 3S4. Ah, this is the only trouble with leads. They get tangled. Pin 1 is down there, and I don't want to ground this by accident. Yep, we've got voltage. A lot more than I thought we should. We've got 25 volts there, which leads me to believe that one of the tubes in the heater string is open, because they should be pulling that voltage down. Let's see, the 1S, you know, that should only be like uh, 5 or 6 volts, but it looks to me like it's working into an open load. Um, unless something is terribly, terribly, terribly wrong here, and that tube is drawing tons and tons of current. And it's hot, but not unreasonably so. But that's what will pull down, that'll pull all this voltage low if we have these tubes drawing like 50 milliamp years of current. So something's wrong in the heater string. We have way too high a voltage here right now. And uh, I'm not panicking and shutting it off because if I've blown a, blown a heater at this point, it's too late. But let's go down the string. Uh, I'm going to have to flip this thing over and see which tube is which so I can track the heater string down. Give me a minute. These please. radios are so packed that I can't even access that tube socket unless I took this terminal strip off of here. However, I did track it out enough to know that we go from the 3Q4 to the 1T4, which is buried down there. From there it goes to the 1R5, which is up here. So I'm going to go to pin 7 and 1 on the 1R5. And if I have voltage here, then I know we're okay there. And the problem is somewhere else. 
So, get some more light down here so I can see what I'm doing. Pins one and seven are right there on the one uh, R five, and the one R five is our oscillator converter. So let's see what we've got on pins. I say one and five. No, one R five, one and seven. Pins one and seven. So I'm not seeing any meter movement there. And I've got no meter, I got no voltage on pin one or seven, so it looks like the problem is the tube that's buried down in here. But let's pull that tube out and check its heater. Some of these tubes, I don't know what their history is, but I'm gonna shut it off and we'll pull that one out and check its heater. And uh, see where we go from there. Come on. One T4. And I sure hope I haven't blown up a tube by plugging them. Oh boy, corroded pins. Yeah, we have an open heater. Now, was it open or did it burn, burn out because of the high voltage? that's present that's the question so what I'm gonna do rather than plug another tube in and take a chance we know we have four tubes here and we know that they're dropping 50 milliampers so we'll just calculate up well what should the voltage be uh, and pin seven of the one T four. Uh, I've got the wrong schematic. We'll calculate up a resistor and put a resistor in there instead of the tubes and see if our filament voltage comes back down rather than take a chance on burning up another tube if indeed that's what caused the problem, if there's something wrong in the wiring. This set is such a hack job that uh, we really, and this tube looks virtually brand new. It's clean. So, my fear is there's something wrong with the wiring in this set that took the tube out. But let's find out. Let's find out if I'm all wet. Let me get some, uh, the other schematic over here and we'll pick a resistor. Well, I just went through that whole spiel and the camera wasn't even turned on. <laughs> Once again, excellent cinematography. We will go over it again. According to Sam's, at this pin, pin 7 of this 1T4, in relation to ground, we should have 5 volts right here at this point. And we're measuring 25 volts because there's no load. One of the tubes is open, but did the tube blow open because the voltage was too high, or is just the voltage high because I had a bad tube that I stuck in there? So we know the tube filaments from our tube manual. You do own a tube manual, don't you? We know our heaters draw 50 milliampers. So we're looking for 5 volts. I'm going to divide that by 0 0.05 using Ohm's law. That equates to a 100 ohm resistor. So when these tubes are in operation, it's the same thing as having a 100 ohm resistor load here across this stretch. So I'm going to take a 100 ohm resistor, and, and I'm ignoring these here because they're high enough in, in resistance that, yeah, we can, we can just ignore them for now. I'm going to put a 100 ohm resistance from here to ground, and if I have something approaching 5 volts, I'll know that I just stuck a dead tube in there. But if I'm still seeing 15 or 12 volts here, I know that I blew the tube something's wrong in the circuit it means I've just lost a tube 
So let me dig out a 100 ohm resistor. I'm going to go from this point to ground and we'll turn the set back on and we'll measure the voltage here again and see what we have. Okay, as my mother used to say, you're in the right church, you're just in the wrong pew. I want to be on pin 1, not pin 7. Pin 7 of the 1T4, pin 1 of the 3Q4. I was connected to pin 7. That doesn't go anywhere. No wonder there's no voltage there. So we're on the right one now. We're on the right tube, and uh, now i got to turn it on. I haven't warmed it up yet. Uh, oh, and the filter capacitors seem to have plenty of life left in them, as crummy as it looks. Uh, several minutes after I turned the set on, I went in there with the soldering iron. I got a good snap out of the filter cap. There's no bleeder resistors on them. So the caps are holding a charge quite well. Uh, let's see, we're on a 10 volt scale. There we go, four volts. Absolutely four volts, so there's no problem there. Can you see that meter, I hope? Yeah, you can see the meter. That's reading four volts. So, Again, I didn't know the history of this tube when I stuck it in there. It's got an open heater, open filament, um, because that voltage is absolutely fine. Now I can confidently drop another tube in that socket and not worry about it blow, either blowing out or taking another one in the string out, because we have the correct voltage right there across the whole heater string. There should be nothing else in there. I can't believe anything down there has been changed around because it, there's just no room to work down there. But I will take a quick look at the heater string and uh, well, actually, could I put a? I could probably just put a resistor in place of the one uh, R5 or one T4. No, I'll just put a tube in there. I'm confident. I'm confident. So let me find another 1T4. I might have to take one out of uh, one of my other sets here. And uh, that's a shame. I, I hate getting rid of these tubes, but when they're dead, they're dead. I've checked everything out as best I can. There is something wired differently from the schematic. The pins uh, 1 and 7 on the 1T4 are reversed. It shows this resistor between pin 1 and pin 7 of these two tubes, but it's between pin 7 and pin 7, and pin 1 is over here. However, it looks like factory to me. Uh, I can't see any evidence that those connections were ever disturbed. I've checked everything else out and it looks good. Now what I've done, if you remember when we did the first set, the two 1T4s and the 1R5, we had intact filaments, but there was no emission on the tubes. So actually the 1T4 I think registered like 20% or something. So I dug that tube out of the trash and it's in this set just so we have an intact filament rather than take a chance with pulling one out of my working radio over there. I don't want to lose any more tubes. The uh, rectifier and the audio amplifier, the 50B5, uh, are both brand new, but I'm not concerned about those. It's the one volt tubes I'm concerned with. Excuse me. <clears throat> so what I've done as I put everything back, I've pulled out my 100 ohm resistor and I've got my meter connected where the 100 ohm resistor was and where that 5 volts should be right here on the schematic. And we have an intact string now. And I'm just going to bring the voltage up real slow and let the rectifier warm up real slow. And we'll keep an eye on the voltage. The meter is set on the 10 volt scale. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna bump it up to 30 volts here to start because we got to get the the rectifier starting to warm up. 
and it's going to take a while. Actually, I'll bump it up to around 40 so this meter, can you see that meter up there? And it probably not. Now it should just be in frame. We're at 43 volts and 110 milliampers, and I'm monitoring the heater string. And if we see anything going awry, I'll just slam the switch off, but still nothing happening. But I'm going to give it time because it's going to come up slow at this voltage. All right, we're at 50 volts. Still not seeing anything at all. I am on the right pin this time. On volts, yep, everything's in the right place. And we're going to have to put enough AC in so that the amplifier tube actually starts amplifying because that's when the voltage drop is going to happen. Okay. I can see the meter coming up now. You should be, yeah, you can see that. And I'm sure it's correct at this point, but it's just I don't want to destroy any more tubes because they don't make them anymore. Eventually we're going to run out of stock. But we're up to 74 volts and we're only we're on the 10 volt scale so we're two volts across the tubes right now you can see it coming up on at 84 volts AC and so far it's looking good oh yeah now we have audio so there wasn't anything wrong, it's just that filament was open. Again, I don't know the history of that tube I stuck in there. It was in a pile of tubes that I had. Probably been rolling around in the drawer for 25 or 30 years. May have been good when it went in there. There's 100 volts and we're not even to 4 volts on the heaters yet. 110 volts, about 4.4 volts. It looks like we're going to come right up to the 5 volts we should have when I hit 120. Yeah, we're drawing enough current now that uh, the dim bulb is lit and limiting my AC going in. It's 116, but as you can see, we have audio now where we didn't before. Wonder if we have an intermittent pot here. receiving anything but I'm not surprised that IF amplifier is dead. Just barely under 5 volts and I'm at 117 so uh, let's turn this down and we'll go without the we'll go full power here. memory stick ran out. Somewhere around here I've got a 64 gig. I've misplaced it. I've been using 16 gigs to fill in, but it'll turn up. Um, we've got some motor boating. Now that we have audio, I've got the signal tracer fired up because we may end up using it. But I'm going to replace that 1T4 that I know is bad. I'm going to pull one out of my radio and uh, let me shut this off here. I'm going to pull this one, this IF amplifier out of here because we know this tube is dead. That came out of the other set. Let me go over here and pull one out of my radio. 
I'll have to get around to ordering some more of these. And we'll put another, we'll put a, a known good IEF amplifier tube in here. Let's see what happens. That go in here, yeah, one in the socket. Okay. Let's see what happens now. And if not, we'll get the signal tracer going. Frontier oh. Ta-da! There we go. Uh, no, but I know what a captive portal is. So you're. Uh, well, looks like we've got some bad tube sockets too, or some bad connections. Program you use, it may be necessary to clear your cache or restart your browser in order to so access a, the web. A captive yeah, portal. you hear that motor you know, you That's a, a bad capacitor. And, uh, pops up that says we have to agree to our terms. So this thing service. needs to be recapped. That's a something I'm not going to do. It's a broken system. We know the set is saveable, and I'll pass this on. It's not something your frontier I'm going to see if the fellow who donated app. the speaker to Thomas's so radio wants this because he had bought a radio to repair and uh, it showed up in pieces. So maybe he'll want this one. It's an older Mac. Can you get it? And uh, he'll need to buy a couple of tubes. He can have the 35W4 or the 50C5. My 1T4 is going back in mine. These other tubes are unknown quantities. Okay. Well, yeah, it's got a bad tube socket over here. Or a bad connection underneath. Wow. I got the box right here. You know, that's you bought it about ten years ago. Let me squirt some uh, deoxid in these tube sockets. Okay, be all right. I don't know where I left off. Oh, I was getting uh, some deoxid. It seems to have cleared up the tube socket issue. Yeah, first year. What do you think you're I got distracted by a phone call. Lost whack where I am. I'm in good health. So, Vic, if you want this radio, let me know. You're welcome to it. I'll ship it off to you, and, and uh, thank you very much for the speaker you're sending our way. Uh, vaccination to get on a plane to miss. This will need a lot of work. It needs total recapping. That motor boating is almost guaranteed to be a cap. You'll need a couple of 1T4s uh, tubes. The ones that are in here are out of my radio. But I'll give you a 35W4, 50B5. There wasn't any tubes in this set when I got it. Uh, I think this 1R5 and the 1S5 you can have too. So you'll need two 1T4s. It's also going to be missing a 3Q4 audio amp tube, but you don't need that. Uh, when it's running on AC, it uses this 50B5. The uh, 3Q4 is only for when it's on battery operation. This set's going to be at least as sensitive as the one I've got. Uh, it probably will need alignment, of course, but I think it's in. Uh, it's ready to go. Just got to put the fresh set of caps in it. The last person that was in this set didn't do a very nice job. I, you know, just look at these solder connections here. These are just the ones that are outside. There's a pile of stuff inside that's J-hooked with no insulation. There's all kinds of capacitors in there. Of course, they got to be pulled out and replaced anyway. But that's a J-hooked cap. That's a J-hooked cap. Another J-hooked cap. Uh, you might want to replace this safety cap, or you can leave it. It should be fine. This is brand new. This is brand new. The two caps down the end are new. But uh, the filter should be changed. All of these capacitors should be ripped out of here and replaced. But I only bought this as a parts radio. 
and you had bought one that needed re uh, needed work anyway you were planning on repairing one only it ended up in pieces so if you want this let me know I'll ship it out to you and uh, we're gonna call this one done I'm gonna move on to the GE set or actually I'm probably gonna go back and work on the cabinet for the triad I've stripped off the veneer I used my heat gun and a putty knife and it peeled off we've cleaned it up I've been sanding it tonight I'm covered in sawdust and I'm gonna put this back in its cabinet and call it finished and we know it works we know it's a viable set and it's worth restoring I'm the radio mechanic this is uh, Emerson number two we'll see you soon with the GE that runs on battery bye bye